Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for The Natural Lifestyle Show. I'm Billy. I'm Angel. And? And today we're talking about the history of circumcision and why it's done. They actually kept up with the history of that? There is a history of it. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, and um... And this sounds so painful. <laughs> this, and I just want um, to let you know that we're... I'm not, this, the intention of this video and the other one that we're going to make about circumcision is not to make anybody feel bad if they've had one or if they've had their child circumcised. It's an educational thing because mm. when you know better, you can do better. And it's, it's just, it's good to have knowledge. The thing of it is, um, people may, you may have the wrong idea or may have been given some information and what we're doing, we're providing you with more information and you know, that way you can decide what you want to do. Yeah, and also I'm giving you resources so you can look into it yourself mm -hmm. more. But you know, I started- Always gotta give you resources. Yes. I was thinking about it, you know, I've done all this research and reading, but then I thought about it, what did I know about it before I, I found out the facts? Well, we live in America, so what I knew about it, I only knew two things. I knew baby boys had it done when they were born, and there was really no questions asked, no reasons why, it just was done. And also, I knew it was a biblical command from God. It was like a, you know, a covenant sign. But the things, to me, the thing that, uh, just like with anything else, the things that we know of or we read about there is not necessarily our practice we have today. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'll just tell you straight off that the biblical circumcision and the circumcision that happens in America are two totally and completely, mm -hmm. they cannot be more different than each other. The original Night biblical circum circumcision was a small slit. Mm -hmm. um, and... It was not a dismemberment or mm -hmm. a disfigurement. It was a slit. And um, there's a good article on it about it. I read it several about it several places, but drmama.org has a really good article about biblical circumcision. And one thing that she said was um, one point, well, I mean, there's a lot of points, but one point was that it's, it's really such a major thing to remove so much off of somebody like that that you know, it wouldn't be a common practice back then because a lot of times it was done in the family and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, so. But it's really, really kind of mind-boggling the life that this thing has taken on uh, on itself. And I'll just get started with this. Okay. okay, the first history of circumcision that we know of was in ancient Egypt. And um, so, I mean, they have like pictures of it and also writings about it. Um, and I think that they were talking about, in one of the writings, something about some, something they used to numb or something like that to make it acceptable is what they said. I guess mm -hmm. so it wouldn't hurt so bad is what they were saying. Mm. Um, but, I'm hurting just thinking about this. But whether or not it really helped, I mean, come on, I don't know. You're talking about the pain. but I mean, you can, you can do Rambo and you can bite the, bite the stick or, you know. I mean, it's, it's really bad. To tell. It's bad. And... Oddly enough, in ancient Egypt, not ancient, in Egypt, if you look at your Facebook news or any news anywhere, um, a 17-year-old girl died during a female circumcision a few weeks ago, and that was in Egypt. So Females have circumcision? Some places. Mm. Um, Egypt and some countries near that do female circumcision. And so, you know, I thought that was kind of odd that Egypt was one of the first places to have a record of male circumcision and they're stu still doing male and female circumcision so for some reason that's deeply rooted in their culture um, why I really don't know um, also some places like I saw this documentary of a village in Africa some some like I don't know if you call it tribes or groups of people they do a rite of passage like when the person reaches adulthood yeah which a lot of a lot of People say it's like 12 or a little higher. Yeah, I'm not. 18. Again, it probably varies. Yeah, I think Because I think that after, in, in this one in particular, they can, you know, get married and stuff after this. But um, they have to, it's a public thing. And I actually saw a video of it. It was it looked very painful. Mm. And they're not supposed to flinch or show any sign of pain, but it's very bloody and very, um, it, it looks really horrible. And um, as you can imagine, it's probably not very sanitary. No. Um, so yeah, that's another reason for it. And also the biblical circumcision that we spoke of, which was a covenant and a slit. But the, uh, in America, 
it's only been happening for about the last hundred years and it's really weird how it started it was a few doctors you know decided that well there was like two key doctors I think they decided the circumcision was like a cure-all for a lot of things hmm. I mean really weird things like seizures and paralysis and stuff like that stuff that you know it really does not affect so basically it was the misunderstanding well I think it was born out of ignorance with these people okay um, we're just gonna be blunt though. yeah I mean I really think so but but equally to that or maybe even more so it was a movement of people that wanted to do it to prevent masturbation mm. yeah and that's the that, that that was a big thing, a really big thing. And they some some of the proponents even said that it was good for a baby boy to feel pain while it happened so that he would always associate pain with that area of his body. And so Ouch. yeah, so in America it it has really twisted roots and um and you'll hear some people say I mean the big thing is that you know there could a lot of people say, like the doctors, and the reason why they'll tell you that they do this is because there could be some like um, infection or some something happen, and you know, or you know, to that that a circum they try to scare you. Well, no, they say that a circumcision would prevent like an infection or something like that because they think that they just think it's best to remove the foreskin. But even if there was an infection or something like that. From what I've read, they're easily treated, and usually you don't have to have a circumcision. But most of the men in the world are not circumcised. Um, America's really, really held on to this um, really strange custom. And in the beginning of the 1900s, they some people promoted women to be circumcised, and they would circumcise women that they said were insane against their will. They just want to butcher everybody. Yeah, and I think it was in 1960 that female circumcision was finally outlawed in the U.S. <coughs> and of course, some people are trying to get male circumcision outlawed as well. And so, I mean, this is just this is just a good example of why the danger of just going along with things that you're just told without even wondering why yeah it's, it's like with anything else you know you, you you look at it as a normal practice and so you don't even question it but you know you got to really sit back and you got to think okay why is this going on what's the history of it yeah uh, do i agree with this and from what i've read most of the problems um so-called problems that people could have with their foreskin is not really an issue because, you know, I was reading about, you know, because we're going to have a baby boy and <laughs> of course he's not going to be circumcised. And they say that, you know, when a baby's born, their foreskin is attached to their penis and it does not detach until like about between age 10 and adulthood. So basically you just leave it alone. You know, I mean, you just leave it alone. But a lot of times, and I've even read like at the doctor's office, so we're going to have to be really careful. Sometimes doctors will dislodge it, you know, take it off. And what happens then? You know, it hurts. It's an injury. So the thing about it is, is that again, it's it's ignorance. You know, ignorance causes a lot of problems. Yeah, it, it and, really does. Yeah, that's why we that's why we always say, you know, we give you the fact, we give you what we find out, we give you. Uh, places to go research this for yourself. Yeah, I mean it, it's a part of the body that God put there for a reason mm -hmm. and you know it, It's gonna make a change and when it does it will on its own and just leave it alone mm -hmm. <laughs> Just leave it alone. You know um, when God created everyone he he knew what he was doing Yeah, exactly. You know, we shouldn't jump in there and say oh well we could do this better. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really strange. And I was also reading a story on there. It's like, they said it's so ingrained in the American psyche that it's just something that really has to be done. They told this story about this woman who had this baby and he was delivered by forceps and he had a fracture to a skull. He had to be resuscitated mm. and everything. And the doctor came in there and the first question she said, when can he be circumcised? I mean, this child has almost died. And that's her first question that came out of her mouth. I mean, people just are just like brainwashed to believe that it's just something that has to happen right away. Well, see, when they ask me that question, I'm going to say when he gets old enough to decide that for himself. Which we can guarantee he won't. <laughs> I don't think if you ever ask any grown person that, no, because if you ask a grown woman, are they going to say yes? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's the same thing. Because, um, 
this is not really part of history, but this is a fact that the um, the part the well the hood I guess they, that's what they call it of the clitoris of a woman is this is equivalent to the foreskin on a man. So if you go up to a woman and ask, do you want a part of you cut off? I'm gonna say yes. You know, there's not one day that has went by that I said, man, I, I wish I had that done. <laughs> that, that's just not happening. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, we just wanted to let you know about some of the history here. And I'm going to have down below some websites. I mean, several websites to go to that tell the history and tell a lot of information about it. Stopthecut.org is probably the best one because on the lower left-hand side, side at the bottom, they have links to websites, other websites, mm -hmm. and also I think they have links to books. And so I would really, really suggest that. And DrMama.org is a wonderful one um, to be an advocate for your child and things like that. They even sell like little cards that tell how to care for um, somebody who's uncircumcised. And they will even, from what I understand, mail a postcard to a doctor's office or something or have somewhere you can because a lot of doctors don't know the proper care. All they know is just to circumcise. So they, they you know, they're not really up on the proper care. and They can cause a lot of damage. And also there was this one other um, lady I had read about with her son. She had to take her son to the doctor for dehydration because he was sick. And the, they wanted to put a catheter in him. And she, you know, because you have to, if you're a parent, you have to stand up for your child. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, don't retract. And the, the nurse was like, not at all. She's like, I don't know how to do this then. And the woman said it took her like 30 seconds to do it, you know, to figure it out. But, you know, she could have caused that little boy a whole lot of injury for no reason if his mom wouldn't have, you know, just Step said. Right yeah. So See, a lot of times, I'm telling you, you the kids are not going to speak for themselves. You know, when they're that young, they can't. Uh, and and something that that nurse, yeah, and something that nurse could have would have done in just a second could have caused him pain for weeks mm -hmm. and weeks and weeks, and you know it just wouldn't. You know, that's just not cool. So education is a great thing, and those websites will help you educate. Learn. Yeah, and again, I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad about anything, but you know, educate yourself and educate other people. Mm -hmm. And that's what the question whole, why. Some, something's being done exactly yeah. always because I mean especially if somebody's cutting off a part of somebody's body especially if they're helpless baby um, you know I've seen some videos you can go on YouTube and watch some videos of male circumcisions and a lot of times they'll say that they I avoid those <laughs> yeah they'll say they numb the area and stuff sometimes but I'm telling you, I believe it's very painful. I believe, I believe it's extremely painful. I bet it is. And even if it's Look, not... I'm a man, I can tell you, I think it is. Yeah, and even if it's not, you can believe that it, heal, it takes weeks to heal up. And then it alters the child's body to the point where it's not functioning properly, or like it, God intended it to. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's really... Um, it's really something to look into and um we're going to touch on some a lot other stuff about circumcision in our next video called why we're not having our son circumcised we're going to give a lot more information than just the history on this next video but i do want to mention that the foreskin has 10 to 20,000 nerve endings so you can believe that that hurts to get it cut off <laughs> so <laughs> on that note <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you've learned something today, and we hope that, um, that with information, maybe you can make a difference in somebody else's life. Hopefully. Yeah, and you know, like I said, and you know, I'm gonna reiterate this. You know, we give you the information, you do your own research, and come to your own conclusion. You know, um, I'm not saying we're against anything. But I am against circumcision. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm talking about <laughs> we're not against anybody who decides to do it. That's what I'm saying. If you decide to do it, it's a, to me, it's your, I think, your choice. I, it, I think it's your choice if you're an adult and you make that decision. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't think that anybody should make that decision for their child. But legally, in America, you can. Mm -hmm. so. Well. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anything else? No. I'd like for you to join our social media on Facebook. Yeah, down below. I'd like for you to follow us on Instagram. And sign up for our newsletter. Which we got something going on with that here in a little while. Yes, yeah, so please sign up for our newsletter and we will be making another video in just a few moments. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.